And in this video, I'll be talking about potential meter, meter bridge and wisdom bridge. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to state the application of potential meter, wisdom bridge and meter bridge. Secondly, you'll be able to state the formula for solving calculation problem involving each of potential meter, wisdom bridge and meter bridge. And thirdly, you'll be able to solve calculation problem on potential meter, wisdom bridge and meter bridge using the formula that you might have stated on the second objective above. So, what is a potentiometer? A potentiometer, just like any other kind of um, electrical device that we make use of uh, in the laboratory, it is used to determine the value of voltage or potential difference by making comparison of an unknown voltage to a known one. So, the known voltage that we make use of, meaning the cell or battery that the value of it is known that we are making use of, is what to refer to as a reference voltage. The two images we are seeing above represent the image for potentiometer. The first one, the one I'm having here, is the real apparatus that we use in the laboratory for potentiometer. Why this one represents the circuit uh, diagram of it? Now, if you look at this diagram, we have um, galvanometer at this place. We have electromotive force of a battery or a cell of a known value here. Then here is going to represent where we are going to insert the cell that we tend to determine is what is uh, the value of its potential difference of voltage. Now, how we used to go about this one is that from the above experiment is that E1 and E2 are equivalent to potential difference at the balance point E1 and E2. So basically, if you want to determine the value of um, unknown a cell, one of the two must be known. The value of EMF of the one of the two must be known. So let's assume E1 has a known uh, voltage, maybe 1.5 or 1.25 and so on like that. So for us to know the value of the length L1, what we just do is that we'll adjust the position of the jockey. We'll adjust the position of the, the jockey here by varying it on the length of the constant wire that we'll have on the potentiometer. So by varying it, a point is going to be reached where there is not going to be any deflection on the galvanometer. When there is no deflection of the galvanometer, the length that at uh, at which you have, you got this value of known deflection of when there is no deflection on the potentiometer, we take it as L1. Remember, I said the value of the voltage of the EMF of the first cell is known in this case, so L1 is known. So we have known the value of E1, we've known the value of L1. Then the second thing we are going to do is that we will replace the value of that cell whose potential uh, potential difference is known before with another cell whose potential difference is not known. That is the one we tend to determine the value of it at EMF. So we vary the length again and determine the length L2, which is going to be at the point where there is no deflection on the galvanometer again. Then we we'll substitute into the formula that we have here and do the simple calculation to get the value of EMF of the second cell, uh, E2. Now, the formula we make use of here is just going to be E1 over E2 equals to L1 over uh, L2. So, and that is the formula we have for calculating um, EMF of an unknown uh, cell using a potential meter experiment. The second uh, thing we have here is what we call the Wiston Bridge. Wiston Bridge is something of this nature. This is our, the circuit diagram for our Wiston Bridge. So, it contains um, three resistances, which are what the constant one. We have R1, Rx, and R3. And it has one variable resistor, R2, whose value can be changed. That is the, the, the implication of the term uh, variable resistor that we have there. So let us assume we tend to determine the value of unknown resistance uh, or res resistor uh, Rx from what we are seeing in this place. The circuit is going to be set up as we are seeing it here. E A represents the battery. Then we have resistance R1, whose value is known. Resistance R3, whose value is known. Resistance Rx, whose value is not known. Then we have R2, which is a variable resistor. So by setting up the circuit that we have here, all we just have to do is that we'll be changing the value of resistance R2 perhaps to make use of a real start. So we'll be changing the value of this resistance R2 until when there is null deflection in the galvanometer. At a point, this is a very important point you must know here. At a point where there is a null deflection in the galvanometer, automatically that shows that there's not going to be any current flowing in that case. And when there's no current flowing, then galvanometer will not deflect at all. The value of EMF at that point is going to be equal to zero. Then at that point, you can make a kind of comparison between R1 and R2. So the formula we just use in that case, when there is no deflection, will be R1 over R2 equals to R3 over Rx. R1 over R2 equals to R3 over Rx. So from there, 
the value of R2 would have been known because you have varied and you know the value at which it has taken place. The value of R1, R1 is known, R3 is known. The only one that will be unknown in this case is going to be uh, Rx. So from there, you can determine the value of Rx that you tend to determine its value. And the third one we have is what they call a meter bridge. For a meter bridge, it is something of this nature. This main diagram of it resembles that of um, a potentiometer. However, we have um, a kind of what something like a bridge at two places, the first one and the second one. Between the first one and the second one, we have a standard resistor whose value is known R, and we have the second one that you tend to determine its value. Let's assume that resistance is what is X. So from this place, just like the previous two previous experiments, you will adjust the position of the galvanometer of the jockey here until there's no any deflection taking place. And when there's no any deflection taking place there, then at that point, you measure the value of length L, and the second one is going to be length L2. Since the total length we have here, so remember we said it's a meter bridge, since the total length here is 100 centimeters, that should have varied the value of the position of jockey here until there's no, or there's no deflection. The value of L1 would have been known. Let's assume it's 20. Then the second one is going to be 100 minus 20 because total length is 100. So if it is L, the second length is going to be 100 minus L. So using the same approach as the previous one, the formula we just used in this case is going to be the we have um, R over X, R over X equals to L over 100 minus L. Or you can do it as R over L equals to what? X over 100 minus L. So this is the formula you are going to make use of to solve the problem. And these are the three main uh, instruments that we tend to discuss in this video. Now let's solve some calculation problem uh, under this one. This is the first question that we we'll have here. An emitter bridge mark AB. The potential, the balance point is found at to be at 39.5 centimeter from the end A. Then the resistance Y is of 12.5 ohms. Determine the resistance of X. So just like we have done in the pre, uh, explained to us in the uh, earlier, so the only thing you just have to do is just, just compare the value or get the, get the value that of the data given to you in this diagram. The LY in this question, LY in this question is given to us to be 39.5 according to what you are saying, meaning the length at which you have resistance uh, RX, um, RY equals to uh, 39.5 and you have RY in the question to be equals to uh, 12.5. Then the next thing we have is what LX. Remember, I told us earlier that if you get the value of the uh, of LY to be equal to 39.5, because the total length is 100 centimeter, the second length is going to be equal to 100 minus the first length, meaning 100 minus 39.5. So you have RX is what you are determining, which is unknown. So using the formula, remember I told us the formula is just going to be R over X, R over X, meaning RY over RX in this case will be equal to L over 100 minus uh, L. So and that's going to be 39.5 divided by 100 minus 39.5, L 100 minus 39.5A. And this is a formula that you are going to invoke or use to solve the problem here. So by substituting your value, the value of R in this case equals to 12.5 divided by the length corresponding to uh, to R, is that's going to be 39.5. And that is Rx, which is the X we have here. And that is um, going to be Rx unknown divided by 100 minus 39.5. So by simplifying this one, you are going to have this one to be equals to 12.5 over 39.5 equals to Rx divided by 100 minus 39.5 will give us 60.5. Then from here, by crossing multiply and making Rx the subject of the formula, you are going to have the value of Rx to be equals to 12.5 times 60.5 divided by 39.5 which will give us a final answer to be equal to 19.15. The second question we have here is, in a potentiometer arrangement, in a potentiometer arrangement, a cell of EMF 1.25 volt gives a balance point at 35.0 uh, centimeter length, meaning you have the value of E1 to be equal to 1.25 and you have L1 to be equal to 35. If the cell is replaced by another cell, and the balance point shift to 63.0 centimeter. So in this case now, we have the value of L2 to be equal to 63, point, uh, 63 centimeter, and we are required to determine the EMF that will give this 63.5 balance point. So to do that, just set out the parameter as usual. E1 equals to 1.25, L1 equals to 35, then you have E2 equals to unknown, then you have L1 equals to 63 centimeter. 
So using the formula that I mentioned earlier, you have E1 over E2 equals to L1 over L2. It's still the same thing as that previous one. If you use it as E1 over L1 equals to E2 over L2, you still have the same result. So substitute your value here. E1 equals to 1.25 divided by E2, which is unknown, equals to L1, which is 35 divided by L2, which is 30 centimeter. There's no need for you to convert the unit here from centimeter to meter because at the end, the units are going to cancel each other. So from this, by uh, making E2 the subject of the formula, you are going to have E2 to be equal to uh, 63 multiplied by 1.25. You have 63 multiplied by 1.25. That's what you have here, then divided by 35 centimeter. And that will give you 2.2 volts after you might have made use of uh, your calculator. The third question we have here is, what is the value of R when D shows uh, no deflection in the circuit below? You are required to determine the value of R in this one, in the width stone bridge as we are seeing from here. So to do that one, this is quite easy. I told us already that this is just going to be R1 over R2. R1 over R2 equals to R3 over R4. Your R1 is going to be R in this case. Your R1 is going to be equal to R. And your R2 is going to be equal to 30 ohms. Then you have R3 is going to be equal to 100 ohms divided by uh, 150 ohms from what you are seeing from the circuit A. Then by crossing multiplying just like the previous one and make R the subject of the formula, then you're going to have R to be equal to 80 ohms multiplied by 100 ohms. Then you have divided by 150 ohms. So by using your calculator here, you're going to have the value of R to be equal to 150, uh, equals to 20 ohms rather. And that's what you have as a final answer for this. The first question, calculate the value of R in the circuit below. Calculate the value of R in the circuit below. We are looking for R. We have R here. So all the thing you just have to make is that you have to just use the formula we have stated earlier for um, a meter bridge. So that's going to be R divided by 60 equals to 2 divided by 40. R divided by 60 equals to 2 divided by 40. And that is what you are going to have here. R over 60 equals to 2 divided by 40 mm. Then They're making R the subject of the formula. You are going to get the value of R to be equal to 2 times 60 millimeter divided by 40. Remember I told us earlier that there's no need for you to convert your unit to meter because the units are going to cancel each other. This mm and mm we cancel, you are going to be linked with ohms as a unit. So using your calculator, you get the value of R to be equal to 3 ohms. And the last question we have here is, Find the value of L1 and the circuit are below. This is the circuit we have. We are required to determine the value of L1. So just remember the formula we are to make use of is R1 over R2, uh, L1 over L1. This divided by the corresponding length equals to 3 divided by corresponding length that you have here. So substituting the value, you have 2 divided by L1 equals to 3 divided by 100 minus L1. And that will simply, by crossing multiply here, you are going to have 2 multiplied by 100 minus L1 then equals to 3 multiplied by L1. So opening the bracket here, you have 2 times 100 will give us 200 minus 2 times L1 will give us 2L1. Then collecting the like sum, you can just take minus 2L1 to the other side, which will give us plus 2L1 at the other side. Then 3L1 plus 2L1 will give us 5L1. Then the next step is to divide both sides by the coefficient of L1. And that will simply give us what? 200 divided by 5, which will give us 40 a millimeter. And that's going to be a final result here. So this is the last calculation we have, a uh, soft problem we have under this question. For more questions, you can consult your YEC pass question or NECO pass question or UTME pass question. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video that will be uploaded.